Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, welcome to uh, our little travel talk today. We have got, there's a lot of news this week. So um, we have got a lot, a, a lot of things to cover. Um, so here's our little schedule of items. We do have a couple of items that pertain slightly more to Canada than to the US. So for all of you watching in the US, please, you know, bear with us. We'll get through this news quick. Um, but uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I do have a question for everybody. And that is, um, here it is a sunny day, uh, or it was a sunny day. It's now a little bit cloudy. Um, we've got lovely warm weather coming this weekend, highs of approximately 15 Celsius, which is about 60 Fahrenheit. And um, I'm curious what the weather's like where you are and where are you watching from? So uh, chat that in the comments below and um, I'd love to hear from you. <clears throat> and I know um, usually at the beginning you might get some ads at the beginning of this. So that's why I always kind of start off uh, a little bit bland. If you want to fast forward through this, if you're watching it later, just look for when the topics to my my right, your left, um, once those are bolded, that's when I have begun discussing the important stuff. So let's get on with it. So number one is nexus rates are increasing. If you don't know what nexus is, uh, for us Canadians, that is our uh, option or our program that we have available to us to get expedited through um, uh, the airports, uh, customs security, that kind of thing. Um, basically, it's the equivalent of like a TSA pre-check, uh, global entry, or uh, clear is one of the new programs that they have for you folks down in the U.S. Our program's pretty inexpensive. Um, for Nexus, it's a you make the you put in the application and it's good for five years, which is pretty remarkable, considering it currently costs fifty dollars. That's it. I mean, that's American. Um, so when you convert that to Canadian, it's about six thousand dollars. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, fifty dollars for five years uh, for the Nexus program. If you um, join or you apply for Nexus after October 1st, it is going to be increasing. When you apply for the program, you have to pay for your, um, for your, you have to pay for the program at that time. Okay. So if you apply for the program prior to October 1st of this year, you'll pay $50 US for your Nexus program. If you apply after on October 1st or after the price is actually going, it's, it's more than doubled. It's going up to $120 per person U S it's still going to be valid for five years. So in my opinion, it's still worthwhile. If you travel a lot, um, you know, oftentimes if you've booked an upgraded seat on a plane, like a WestJet premium, that kind of thing, then you would get, um, uh, expedited entry, you know, entry through um, security. Um, but if you happen to fly more economy, um, then that's something that's worth noting. Um, again, if you're if you're an American and you're watching this, but you're planning on coming to Canada, then <clears throat> it's it's just worth noting that there are programs like that, similar to TSA PreCheck, Global Entry, and Clear, where on the Canadian side you can get back into the U.S. in an expedited fashion. So, quite <laughs> interestingly, this past long weekend, on um, a Thursday morning, I decided to pop down to neighboring Washington State to get gas because it's pretty consistently about fifty cents cheaper per liter. Um, 3.75, I think it is 3.74 liters in a gallon. Um, so you can imagine that adds up pretty darn quickly. Um, I was through, got gas, um, purchased some uh, butter and made it back through in about 20 minutes total. Um, and the lineup was, uh, they were quoting 50 minute wait times to get through in the regular lineups. So in my opinion, it's worthwhile. But as I said, if you if your um, card is expiring, uh, you can apply for it up to one year in advance, and you can um, also um, 
uh, to, to renew. Um, and then you will pay the, the lower rate. Uh, Tammy's asking how much was the butter? <laughs> okay, uh, the butter actually wasn't cheaper. Uh, I always find it interesting to compare prices when I go different places, whether it's, you know, Aruba, Bahamas, Mexico. Um, I, I, I like, yeah, it sounds kind of crazy, but it's, it's interesting, I find, to compare prices, first of all, and then also to see what other goodies they might have. I mean, seriously, if you go abroad, never miss checking out the junk food out because <laughs> there's always wild and wacky stuff. Um, when I was in Hawaii last year, um, interestingly enough, they have Safeway, just like we have here in Canada, which is just a regular grocery store similar to um, not quite like a Fred Meyer, it's more just groceries. Um, but anyways, we, we bought some stuff for our hotel room because we were staying in a regular hotel, not, um, you know, uh, and we were planning on doing some meals in the uh, apartment. So we got some, the most delicious bread. It was everything but the bagel seasoning on top of the bread. If anybody knows where you can find this in the lower mainland, let me know um, in, in the greater Vancouver area. Um, it was absolutely delicious. And to top that off, we bought some butter and it was Land Lakes butter and it was um, olive oil and sea salt flavor. And uh, it's tasty. Now, I think his little tub of butter, butter spread Okay, so I don't know if it's a real butter, but this little tub of butter spread was probably six bucks, but it didn't matter. It tastes so good. It's uh, it's delicious. So Tammy, next time you're down, um, definitely check out the Land Lakes butter because it is tasty. All right, I'm moving on. So the eclipse. Um, so uh, they're planning on. So the way the eclipse is coming uh, is going to um, be visible. It depends on where you're at as to how well you will actually see it. Um, if you are, it's going to go from sort of Cabo uh, down in the Baja Peninsula in Mexico. Uh, it's going to cross right over top of Cabo. And then it's going to come up um, through the U.S. and then up past uh, Niagara Falls is going to be one of the main viewing points for it. If you've never been to Niagara Falls, it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's a pretty amazing sight to see. I've seen photos of it from the U.S. side. I've been to the Canadian side. Um, in my opinion, compared to the photos that I've seen, the waterfalls are best viewed from the Canadian side. You actually see, you get the full, it's like you're having the front row seat. You're not viewing it from the side, which is what you effectively get on the U.S. side. Anyways, the small town of Niagara Falls uh, in 2012, they had a fellow who wanted to do a tightrope walk across the falls. Why? I don't know. I mean, uh, look, clearly this person had a lot of uh, trust in their abilities, <laughs> but suffice to say there was a lot of people who didn't because there ended up being about 150,000 people went to view this um, spectacle. And so when they when they did, it was kind of overwhelming for the town. Hey, Chet, how you doing? Good to see ya. Um, and um, oh, and I'll just point out. So um, it, uh, if you check out Sea Lake Journeys, they do lives. I think like three times a week. Drop a comment in the um, uh, section below. Will you chat if you? Um, can just to let people know when you go live. It's a super fun channel. Um, they do a lot of discussions, obviously, about um, um, uh, cruising, obviously, um, and uh, they live down in that area. So they're just always on a boat. Um, so you can get lots of really good cruising information from them. So um, actually, I don't know if it's you, Chet, or Robin, but <laughs> hi to both of you. <laughs> so anyways, back to this um, eclipse situation. So when they had 150,000 people all of a sudden come into this small town of Niagara Falls, it sort of took the city, it, it, it overwhelmed them a little bit. And they're predicting a million, around a million people coming next week on, I believe it's Monday, April the 8th. Uh, to view the eclipse from Niagara Falls. So not only are you getting that amazing view of the falls, but you're also going to get the eclipse. Um, so kind of a two for one <laughs> in terms of uh, a spectacular view. Um, but 
like I said, they're predicting uh, close to a million uh, visitors. So the city's already declared a state of emergency in as much as they want to ensure that um, emergency services are still going to be available. So, you know, they've set up, you know, porta potties and stuff like that. They're concerned about the traffic and how that's going to affect emergency vehicles in the area. So they've already decided where they're going to have um, them strategically located. So they're not, it's not going to be operating like a regular day. So just know if you do happen to go to um, uh, Niagara Falls to watch the eclipse that they're well prepared and ready for any event to happen. Well, hopefully. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. So we are on to this is a brand new all inclusive opening up in Florida. Oh, okay. And Chet's gotten back to me. Okay, 30 minutes live Wednesday and Friday mornings. Okay, it goes live at 8.30 in the morning. Okay, so for me, that's 5.30. So honestly, I don't often, I don't know if I've ever seen any of them. I did once when I was in the Bahamas because the timing was quite similar. <laughs> um, and then an hour on Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern, which is 3 p.m. Um, so Tammy, I recommend you check them out. They have a, a really fun show on Sundays and they got a lot of regulars who pop on and uh, add their comments and stuff like that. So definitely be sure to check that out. Um, so yeah, going back to this new all-inclusive in Florida. Now, if you recall, um, there was a Club Med in Florida before. It's the Club Med Sandpiper Bay. And this was all-inclusive, but it was the Club Med version of all-inclusive, which Frankly, I've never been any manner of a fan of. Um, there is a certain market for it, and there's a certain um, genre or, or um, type of person who really enjoys their resorts because they are very popular, um, but it's just not my thing. Um, the food is predominantly, and, and I mean, this is not the latest information, um, but from what I understand, it is predominantly buffet style dining and it's group style seating. So sort of like when you get on a cruise ship and they're like, hey, come and sit with your six new best friends. And you're like, well, I actually just kind of wanted to sit with my friend that I travel with or my husband that I'm sharing this cruise with um, and not necessarily meeting a bunch of other people, some of whom you may or may not enjoy. <laughs> um so that hasn't been a huge fan for me. Also, I think in the past, they predominantly have not had necessarily uh, high quality alcohol, like uh, top shelf alcohol, that kind of thing. Um, but what's interesting is, uh, so in 2022, I've got my bag of notes here. That's why I keep looking around because <laughs> there's a lot going on this week. Um, so in 2020, September 2022, the um, it was the Club Med Sandpiper Bay was bought by Altitude Holdings and uh, somewhere in their um, group of businesses includes the Wyndham's, the Wyndham Hotels. So there is some speculation, uh, as you are maybe may or may not be aware, um, the Wyndham, uh, Wyndham Ultra in Cancun and in Playa del Carmen is part of the Wyndham Group. It's also managed by Playa Resorts, and we all know Playa Resorts, but maybe we don't know, uh, but Playa Resorts are sort of the behind-the-scenes management team for Hi most <laughs> Hyatt Ziva and Zalara Resorts. So there's the Hyatt Ziva Cancun, Hyatt Zalara Cancun, the Hyatt Ziva Puerto Vallarta, Hyatt, Hyatt Ziva Los Cabos. Uh, of course, there's the Hyatt Ziva Rose Hall, Hyatt Zalara Rose Hall in Jamaica, Hyatt, Ziva, and Zalara Capcana, and all of those are managed by Playa Resorts. Hey, Barbara, how you doing? Good to see you. Welcome. Um, and so it's a little bit confusing because <laughs> uh, was it last, I think it was last fall, that Playa Resorts dropped now, it could have been their contract ended. It's not to say it was a ne negative or there was nothing nefarious about it, but um, Playa Resorts used to be the management group for Hyatt Ziva Riviera Cancun and Hyatt Zalara Riviera Maya. And that is now, <laughs> that is now, now under the Hilton, no, the Hyatt 
the inclusive collection by Hyatt. Are, are you are you are you keeping up? Are you following along with this? It is so confusing. Um, I just remember it based on my sales reps because Freddie looks after all my Hyatt Siva Zolara stuff, and Carlo and Scott look after all of my um, what was formerly AM Resorts. So Secrets, Dreams, Breathless, Soa Tree, uh, Sunscape Resorts. Um, it's, it's very confusing, but what's interesting is with um, those different chains, there are certain standards that they have. And so Wyndham, I suspect they may reopen this. Well, it's, it's open right now, but they're doing major renovations with the new uh, Sandpiper, Sandpiper Bay Inn, the Sandpiper Bay Resort in, um, in Florida. And this is just north of Miami in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I suspect it may reopen as a, uh, or fully reopen as a Wyndham Ultra, but you know, we shall see. But they say all the food and drinks are going to be included. There's all kinds of activities, including pickleball and, um, you know, lots and lots of things to do. And that's all included. So that's quite interesting. Um, 28th Street Media. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for popping by. Uh, just a video on the Rio Resorts. Planning on visiting in May. Have Ocean Maya Royale booked. I'm going to change. Do I think Rio Las Americas is a good switch? Well, I don't know what Ocean Maya Royale. I don't. I don't know that of that as a Rio, unless you're saying you've booked that the Ocean Maya Royale and you're thinking of moving to the Rio Las Americas. I mean, like I've stayed at. Geez, um, three Rio resorts in the last 12 months. Um, but honestly, I'd say, you know, the, they're, they're pretty solid. Um, I mean, you've got usually lots of food options. I know the Rio Las Americas in Cancun is, um, um, yeah, Barbara's playing along. Yeah, the Rio in Cancun, Riviera Maya. Yeah, so I think it's the Ocean. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Yeah, the Ocean Maya Resort. Yeah, exactly. Um, and oh, lots of comments. Okay, well, we'll talk. We'll catch you in a second, Rosemary. Um, so yeah, talking about the Rio Las Americas, I I think it's a good choice. Uh, it's worth noting that in, at that property amazing location. I mean, you've got the beautiful beach, you've got the um, um, the convenience, you're right near all of the clubs, the restaurants, the shops, uh, the shopping malls, if you want to go a little bit more upscale luxury. Um, there's uh, Ruth Chris Steakhouse just down the street. That's at the Plaza Kukulkan, uh, or is it the Luxury Avenue shops? I think Luxury Avenue shops. Um, and uh, but at that property, when the sun comes around in the afternoon, it does create shade in the pool areas. So that's worth noting. Um, but I mean, you've got if you want to booze it up, you got uh, you got your mini bar, you've got a liquor dispenser in the room. Um, the bars are uh, happy to serve, <laughs> happy to serve frequently, plentiful and frequently. Um, and. You will also have exchange privileges to the other Ryu, uh, Ryus in Cancun, not the palace properties. Um, resorts in Cancun. Um, so let me just pull this up real quick. So in Cancun, we have the Hotel Ryu Cancun, uh, the Ryu Caribe. That's the party one. So that's the one that's going to have um, the... Uh, Rio parties. Um, oh, the Rio Palace. Las okay, so the Rio Las Americas is the palace. So then you will have exchange privileges to all of the properties except for the uh, Rio Palace Kukulkan in um, downtown uh, on the Cancun Strip. Um, that one is has Elite Club. And if you haven't seen my video on um, the Elite Club. Uh, I just did a bunch uh, after coming back from the Rio in Rio's in Los Cabos and they've changed it now. So your ability to go to the different properties has, um, has changed a little bit. Um, and yeah, I thought the food was good. Um, you know, some people, um, 
uh, find it too many choices at the buffet. I know we really actually had to edit ourselves um, in our previous or in our most recent trip uh, because there was just there were so many choices. Like at the Rio Palace Baja California. Now this would be the the bat the, the top property in in Cabo um, because it's elite club, uh, not exclusively, but they have elite club rooms. And so at the buffet in the morning, they had like egg breakfast sandwiches, like egg muffin, um, sausage breakfast sandwiches, which was pretty amazing because you don't often see that at resorts. But here's the thing. I saw a lot of people grabbing those and they had two stacks of plates behind the tray. So they knew people were taking these and they had them ready to refresh that plate, you know, a time and time again. But here's the thing. You go to McDonald's, you go to uh, a and W, you go to Burger King, you get a breakfast sandwich. You don't get a breakfast sandwich and then get a plate of fruit and then uh, some toast and then maybe some more bacon and eggs and some little, you got to get some dessert after, right? You don't like you get, you get your egg sandwich and you might get hash browns and then you walk away and you're done. That's it. Breakfast. But <laughs> you know, so you know what I'm saying? Like there's so many choices that, um, Either whenever they say they're doing an activity, you participate <laughs> or you might find you need to go clothing shopping before you get home because uh, the um, uh, they don't fit. What you brought doesn't fit anymore because <laughs> you've eaten too much. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry about the food. I think you'll be quite happy there. Um, and I think truly, truly, uh, compared to the Ocean Maya Royale, um, the... Uh, the beach, the walkability, all of that is going to be way better. Uh, now, Rosemary, she's saying, short video on Dreams Mazatlan, going there on Thursday. First date is not open. Oh, first date, is, it is open. Oh, the, sorry, the Dreams Mazatlan. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really wanted to go to that one um, for the opening or shortly after the opening, but it was either that or going to Cancun and seeing the new Hyatt Vivid. So, mm, mm, Hyatt Vivid one. Um, so into the, the entertainment, yeah, I think that what will happen is usually what they do is the, uh, oops. Uh, so usually what they do when a resort first opens is they'll have some entertainment and go in with, you know, low expectations because if, if it's in-house entertainment, then it, the, the staff aren't going to be completely up to speed. If it's staff, if it's people being brought in, this will be their first time performing at that place. So it's difficult to say how comfortable they'll be and the, you know, do they know the stage, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, typically they'll, they'll have some entertainment. They'll have activities going on. Um, sometimes I've seen like the swim up bars may or may not be fully operational. Um, the spas usually are one of the last things at a resort to open. That said, they usually will have a temporary, you know, a tent on the beach or something like that. So they can do some basic stuff like that. Um, and the gym may or may not be open. Um, they'll probably have rotating restaurants. So instead of, if, uh, forget how many restaurants that one has, but let's say they go, let's say they have six chances are they'll only have, um, you know, three or four of them open, bear in mind too, they're not going to open at full capacity. So if they've only got, you know, 15 to 20% uh, of, of the hotel rooms filled, then they're not going to have all of the restaurants open because all the food prep and everything would just create so much wastage. So you can understand how that is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but yeah, no, I think it'll be great. I'm really looking forward to seeing that property. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a, a, a great place to go. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out for the beach. And um, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, um, yeah, they're, so they're, they're getting pretty good about uh, better advising what sorts of things won't be open. Um, so I think that people appreciate that, you know, if you go at the beginning, the rates are usually cheap as chips. And so it's nice to know that, um, if something's not going to be fully operational, that at least they tell you ahead of time. Um, oh, and Barbara's saying she just got back from the DR and now you're having flurries. Oh dear. Yeah. On the, 
on the East Coast, they're expecting like a foot of snow in some places. Um, here, you know, I'm shorts and t-shirt, flip-flops, haven't stopped wearing flip-flops since I got back from Cabo. Um, and hopefully that won't change. Like I said, it's supposed to be up to what, 15 this weekend, which is about 60 Fahrenheit. So really can't go wrong with that. Okay. Um, so moving on to our next topic. Oh, and I just want to go back and say, uh, with that all inclusive in Florida, I looked up rates. Now this is in the U S, um, obviously, and the rates um, are obviously in U.S. dollars. But think about it, they're having to pay U.S. wages, which are typically exponentially higher than what they're paying to for the employees at all-inclusive resorts in Mexico. Um, but for example, I looked, I pulled up rates for two people in a room. Uh, I did Sundays to Thursdays just to, you know, compare. Um, and this was May 5th to 8th, was $280 US a night, plus tax. Um, September 8th to 12th was $250 US per room per night. And then in December, so, okay, I mean, we're talking Florida. So this is, uh, as of uh, June 1st, we're into hurricane season. Um, and, of course, we know that hurricane season is sort of starts in June, sort of ends in November. But I mean, I've been there and I've been in Cancun in April and they had a tropical storm that was pretty brutal. Um, and in December, the rates pop up to 478. But even for Christmas, Christmas Day, it was like 512 bucks. Um, so uh, very, very reasonable. So and uh Tammy, I just got your private message and congratulations on getting the appointment. That's great. Um, so, oops, and Barbara is Chicago. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, so Chicago, I think you're kind of in the same bucket as, um, as like the East Coast of Canada with as much as the forecast goes. But on the positive side, you should have a really good view of the eclipse. So that's good to know. And Rosemary saying snow a little in Toronto, flying to ah, Vancouver. Yes. Um, yeah, we're supposed to have a nice, dry, um, uh, sunny weekend. So I don't know if you're visiting here or if this is where you're from. But um, uh, yeah, Midwest. I've been to Chicago before. I should. Um, I, I honestly, you guys, like I've been in the travel industry for 15, almost 20 years. I freely admit my geography sucks. If I didn't have Google, I don't, and I would have stopped doing this business years ago because it's like, like, yeah, I want to be a mathematician, but I suck at math. Yeah. <laughs> um, Celix is saying, yeah, it's comparable to cruise prices. It certainly is. And that is, it says it's all food and alcohol and they have proper sit down restaurants and that includes your alcohol, your uh, activities and stuff like that too. So um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, look, it gives us options now that we can um, do all of that stuff. Oh, yeah, right. On your way to Mazatlan overnight in, in Vancouver. Uh, OK, OK. Well, so it's not so bad if it's snowing today and you're going to be in Mazatlan next week. Um, check the forecast, though. When I was in Mazatlan last year, granted, it was February. It was really cold. Like we ended up going to the mall um, and they do have an H&M, by the way. <laughs> it was pretty cool. An H&M, a Sears, um, I forget what other stores they had, uh, but actual like, just like Vancouver kind of stores, um, but not a huge selection of warm jackets or sweaters. Um, so yeah, just double check what you need. <laughs> okay, moving on. So that was the all-inclusive in Florida. Hi at Vivid, my, I'm so excited about this resort, guys. I think the main thing, look, it's not located on the beach. It's across the street uh, from, uh, you know, Playa del Fiends. That's the, when you're driving into Cancun, if you're staying on the, ho on the Cancun Strip, you drive past, uh, you'll drive past on the right-hand side, this most beautiful, stunning beach. There's this, this big area, there's no hotels. And um, that's where the Cancun, one of the places where the Cancun sign is. And you just look down and it's that, turquoise blue water and you know crashing on the beach is absolutely stunning and um yeah it's, it's it's just the most beautiful place well this resort is across the street from that it's actually tucked in where the iberostar golf course is and um it's 
a high rise. Okay, so I know some of you don't like that, but um, I'm okay with it if I get good views. And um, so we'll we'll have to. I'm I'm excited to see what it looks like. Um, but this property, it it supposedly has views of the ocean. So I'm curious to see what that looks like. It's got. It will have Cancun's longest um, rooftop pool. It, I believe 295 feet long, um, which is like huge. Um, with a rooftop bar and a sushi restaurant and all kinds of good stuff. So perfect place to watch the sunset because it's on the lagoon side. So you'll be able to see the ocean and the beach on one side. And on the other side, you'll see the lagoon and that gorgeous sunset right there. So that'll be pretty exciting. But my, <laughs> the biggest thing that caught my eye with this resort is the, um, the number of activities that they have. Um, okay. And... Oh, good, good, good. Okay, yeah, always important to check the weather. That said, um, I mean, like our forecast, it's supposed to be raining all day today. Sun's coming out, not a drop. Um, so AccuWeather, not so accurate. Oh, I should have brought that up about the hurricanes. We'll talk about that in a second. Remind me, somebody remind me if I don't, if I forget. <laughs> After visit tax, we'll talk about the hurricanes, um, the forecast for this year. Um, Okay, so the biggest thing that caught my eye for this property is the activities that they have. Uh, so they've got glow volleyball. Okay, well, my hand-eye coordination is so bad that, uh, I mean, that would be an entertainment uh, event for anyone to watch because it'd be like, oof, and uh, the ball's over there. <laughs> yeah. um, or it'd be hitting me in the head or something. And so uh it'll be interesting i mean i'm curious to see what it's like they have uh beach tennis what the heck is beach tennis i don't know um supposedly they have pickleball i'm excited to see that um and they also have some super fun okay they've got tarot card readings which are free uh which i won't be doing i've had them done in the past and one time i did it and everything came true <laughs> and that freaked me out a little bit so yeah that won't be happening but um, they do have um, pastry classes, which like I'm always game to learn how to cook something or bake something. They also have pottery classes. And I mean, OK, all they said was pottery classes. And I'm like, OK, does that just mean, you know, where you sit by the pool and they've got a, a table and it's got a bunch of ceramic stuff and it's hasn't been um, baked yet or whatever. And you get the paints and you can paint it and then they go and they bake it and you can take it home. Okay, well, I mean, yes, that's enjoyable, but you, know, you can do that anywhere. It has been confirmed that when they say you're going to do pottery classes, it's pottery wheels. So there's going to be ceramic stuff going everywhere. <laughs> but I have, like my whole life, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. I've never had a chance to do it. And uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, Barbara, it is adults only. Top shelf drinks, tons of dining options. I think there's 10 different dining options. A lot of it's grab and go stuff. They're really, they're shooting for a very casual um, what's the phrase? They kind of use a phrase like it's sort of come as you please. So there's no dress code in terms of um, like men don't have to wear long pants for dinner. Men don't have to wear closed toed shoes for dinner. You can wear dress sandals. Um, you can wear shorts. That's not a problem. I don't even know if you need to have collared shirts. Uh, I'll find out. Uh, I'll do the full deck of videos. You know me. I'll go and I'll like I'll film the gym. I'll film the spa if it's open. Uh, no, the spa won't be open because the spa is going to open at the neighboring Dreams Vivid Grand Island property, and that's not planned to open until later this year or possibly even spring of next year. That one will be family friendly, um, and the only place where you would encounter um, those little kids is possibly at the beach club. So as I said, this property is on the other side of the road from the main beach where all the hotels are, but you do have access. They've built a, a, a beach club. Now I don't know where it is, um, but I'll find out. And um, over there you could get food and get drinks. Uh, they have a pool. Um, so if you are the kind of person like me that you want to be in a pool looking at the ocean, I don't really, I, I don't like saltwater pools and I don't, I'm not so much for swimming in the ocean. 
Um, so for me, I just want to be able to see it. Um, so I think this is a perfect opportunity. But once the dream side opens, the guests of that property will be able to go to the beach club as well, which makes sense. Um, so you will see kids there. Um, oh, so, OK, I don't know if you, I'm assuming you've done it then, but uh, I'm super excited. I can maybe make myself a little a bowl to bring home to serve out, you know, candies or those Mexican peanuts, the lime peanuts. Love those. So, yeah, I'm super excited about this and, um, yeah, checking out these activities. So stay tuned. That's going to be coming up at the end of the month. And uh, interestingly enough, one of our uh, channel followers, Christine, is, uh, Christine Tussone, she is going to be there as well. She's going to be at the Ibero Star, which is right across the street. So we're going to try to connect, which will be a hoot um, to actually see somebody down there that, uh, um, that I sort of, sort of know through social media. So kind of cool. Um, now moving on to Mayan trains. See, I told you guys, we had tons of stuff going on this week. Um, so Mayan train or Trend Maya, um, it opened up about, uh, 15, 18 days ago and, um, know a couple of people who've taken it. it so here's the route. I'm going to show you the route. There you go. Okay. So, um, where it's, uh, and the newest, the latest part that's just opened is from Cancun down to Playa del Carmen. And from Playa del Carmen down to Tulum, that is a route that is going to open, um, but it is not ready yet. So as we start, if we started Playa del Carmen, you can go up to Cancun, you can go uh, to the west to Chichen Itza, that part's all open, up to Merida, and you can go all the way down to Palenque. Uh, on the at the bottom there in Chiapas and all of that is open um, but in order to get back to Playa del Carmen you would have to do the reverse of that route because the where it uh, um, where it cuts over to Chetamal that part that whole section is not open yet and from Chetamal up to Playa del Carmen is not open yet but that said I mean uh, like, I'm so excited about this because I think this is such a great opportunity to see different areas that um, you haven't necessarily seen before. I mean, the train is going to ultimately be able to go at speeds of 100 up to about 100 miles an hour or like 160 kilometers an hour. So, I mean, that's a pretty cool way to get around. Um, and especially like even going to Chichen Itza. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I, and there's not a lot of information about it. Uh, I watched a couple of uh, YouTube videos on it yesterday. People that were um, going to um, either from Playa del Carmen or from Puerto Morales down to Playa del Carmen. And uh, we've got the times. So from Cancun, now, like, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I want to I check it out and, and find out what it's like. Of course, my first question is, okay, where exactly is the station? And the, the station is not at the airport. It's a 10-minute bus ride away, but it's a free shuttle. So that's good news. Um, from Cancun, it, going to Playa del Carmen, it leaves at 9 a.m., noon, and 3 p.m. And then on the way back, it comes uh, back, back again three times a day. So Playa del Carmen to Cancun, uh, and it does stop in Puerto Morales uh, both ways um, in the middle of the ride. From Playa del Carmen, it leaves at 10 30 1 30 p.m and then at 4 30 p.m so i mean that's not bad like leave it nine from cancun or noon from cancun um and even to catch the last one at 4 30 is not bad it's about an hour as i say from uh cancun to playa del carmen so if you figure leave at nine you get there for 10 honestly like that would give me enough time to oh and then you have to get a bus or there, apparently there's no there wasn't as so far there haven't been any taxis at the um at the uh what do you call it at the station in Playa del Carmen but who knows like by the time I get there possibly there will be um and yeah we did hear from uh one of our colleagues that the bus ride is free so you can get from the airport to the bus station to the, the 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 train station for free um and then um 
uh, you did have to pay for the bus from the Playa del Carmen train station into uh, it, go, it takes you to the ADO station, the train sta the, the bus station in Playa del Carmen. And if you've been there before, you know, the, that's usually where the taxis will drop you off if you're not really sure and you just you want to go to Fifth Avenue. Um, that's often where they'll take you. And that's sort of at the uh, the southern end of Playa del Carmen near the uh, Cozumel Ferry Terminal, if you're familiar with that area. And that's where there's a bunch of shops, like proper proper shops, um, uh, uh, like name brand shops that you would recognize from home. Um, as you go further along down um, down the, the, the Fifth Avenue, you'll find more like Mexico World <laughs> and shops that don't even have a name um, that uh, sell great souvenirs at really discounted prices. I do find that uh, as you head uh, closer to the, um, the the Cancun ferry terminal, the prices tend to go up and up and up. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, but they have these great um, square pizza places that you can just get a slice of pizza. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what kind of sauce they use, but it makes my mouth water just thinking about it. So I will definitely be stopping for a slice. And they, I think they cost like a buck, maybe two bucks or something. And for sure we'll go for a beer somewhere. So I'm super looking forward to that. And then honestly, Get there by 10, probably by 1.30. I'd honestly probably be ready to hit the train and head back. Um, they do have, um, right now, they're just this, this, this train route is just the most basic trains. So they've got two, uh, three different kinds. They've got the short, the short commuter ones. They've got longer ones, which have a restaurant on them, and then, excuse me, they've also got the longer ones. And this would be like, if you're going from Merida, uh, again, showing you, uh, if you're going from Merida up the top all the way down to Palenque, or maybe going to Chiapas, which is about a third of the way, um, then, uh, you know, perhaps you would want to be um, in, a, in a sleeper car um, because it, it could be a considerably longer ride. Um, again, you know, they're not, they're not, going that fast to start with which is you know that's smart you keep it safe um but um yeah it, it looks like a really neat option so i'm pretty excited about this the, the bus from cancun airport does leave from it starts off at terminal four which for us canadians is where we're going to be flying we would fly into um then goes to three then two then one um and uh, they do have a little food cart uh, on the train so you can go in they have um they had little sandwiches and snacks and um and you know chips and peanuts and stuff like that and they have alcohol as well and um it was difficult to see on the video that i saw but it looks like beers are about 60 pesos so that's pretty decent um um differing stories on whether or not you can take suitcases so i'm gonna find that out a bit better too and perhaps it's because it's new but it's basically you're looking at a carry-on bag and no more than 25 kilos is the restriction on that um and there's several train tracks i wasn't sure if it was just going to be kind of like a tram line but uh coming into i think it was the playa del carmen station could have been yeah i think it was playa del carmen there's like six uh, train tracks. So, I mean, they're expecting a lot for this. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it looks really cool. So um, let's just think if there's any other notes in here. Oh yeah, so for example, uh, you can take the train from Cancun to Merida, which um, is supposed to take two hours, but because, because they're currently restricting the speed on the train, it uh, takes about three hours. But if you wanted to drive it or take a bus, you're looking at four hours or four hours plus on a bus. Um, so by comparison, um, you know, it's uh, it's worth checking out. So I'm pretty excited to see that um, and uh, and find out a little bit more for you on what this is like. So stay tuned for more details on that. But uh, what a great way to be able to travel to different areas. I will say they were hoping originally that the train would be right along the highway or along the coastline. Um, obviously, that didn't uh, work. And you could also understand that as that area expands, because remember, Cancun was solely, it, this area was targeted to become a tourist community, um, actually, um, just over 50 years ago. Um, and 
So they're now doing all the infrastructure updates and stuff like that. Uh, the train incidentally will also connect to the new Tulum airport, which is open and uh, has had its first American flight uh, go in direct from, uh, was it uh, somewhere in Texas, I think, Dallas, I think it was Dallas. So uh, yeah, so lots and lots of updates and changes. So having said that, <laughs> Visitax is a thing. Visitax is, applies if you are visiting the Quintana Roo region, so the, the state of Quintana Roo, which is Cancun, uh, Playa del Carmen, Puerto Morales, um, all the way down to and including Tulum. It is mandatory. People will tell you otherwise. People will tell you they've been. People will tell you they've been multiple times and have never paid it. People will tell you they've been multiple times and never paid it and never been asked to find, to show proof that they've paid it. They are starting to crack down on this. It is linked directly to your passport. So if you do not pay it, it's in the system. And they, in December, they started to crack down on it more and they were more um, inquiring more about uh, asking you to show proof that you had paid. And um, I don't know if that was select terminals or not, because again, remember, for the most part, Canadians will fly into Terminal 4. Most Americans will fly into Terminal, I think, 2 and 3. And then Terminal 1, I think, is by and large domestic flights um, so or domestic arrivals. So if you flew into Mexico, let's say you're coming from Europe, you flew into Mexico City, Mexico City over to Cancun. Yes, I know that seems like a goofy route to go because you're backtracking. But, you know, it is what it is. And sometimes that's what you have to do to get to a place. Um, but suffice it, they are cracking down on this more. And they have also just recently announced that they are um, uh, going to be making, <laughs> making observations is the uh, phrase that they used. And I don't know what this means, but basically it, because it's linked to your passport, the the discussion is that, um, you know, perhaps if you don't pay it this time, then, and this is since they cracked down on it and made it mandatory, which was, I believe, October of 2023. Um, prior to that, it was suggested and, and it wasn't necessarily mandated, but now it is legally required. That said, um, if you don't pay it, then the next time you come, you may, it's, it's unlikely that they would deny you entry. I mean, it's a tourist destination. They want you to come and they want you to spend your money as much as you possibly can, right? Put the money into the into the lo local economy. So they're unlikely to dispute your, or refuse you entry, but probably you would have to pay for any previous trips. It's not a huge amount. It's like 16 bucks. Um, yeah, Tammy said she she paid hers for oh for her April trip. But Tammy, I think you also paid it before it went up. Um, I'm not sure. Correct me if you're wrong on that one. Barbara as well um, just paid for Playa del Carmen. Um, uh, didn't pay this past, last fall. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see uh, if you went after October first. It'll be interesting to see if um, if they say anything. Um, let us know. Hey. Um, we'd love to hear um, what the scoop is on that. If if they do um, decide that you have to pay retroactive, or if they give you a um, if they holler at you, or, or what? Um, I know that there was one time that I couldn't get the system to work, and we all know. I mean, these websites, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, and I honestly, I could not get it to work. So I thought, well, whatever. And if I get there and um, because there literally is no place that I could ever see in the airport to pay it. Um, maybe that's a different terminals. I don't know. But um, I, I was fully prepared to pay it uh, if somebody approached me, but I didn't see anybody and I didn't see any place to pay it. So what am I going to do? Right. Um, and I, I think that's not uncommon, but that was also before it became mandatory. So um, Tammy paid March 29th. Okay. So I think, Oh, that was definitely after it went up. Um, Cause I prepaid for my trip in January or February before it, it before the increase went in. Um, Cause you, there was no really any restrictions on how far ahead you could pay. Um, and I don't know. I, I think, like I said, I don't think they're going to refuse you entry, but 
you know, you, yeah, you might be paying another 16 bucks per person for any previous trips that you took after it became mandatory. Not a huge deal. Um, but yeah, um, just checking these comments. Um, yeah, so look, I, I, like I said, I, I know a lot of you have commented and said you've got trips to Cancun coming up. Um, and my advice is just pay it. Like, why risk your future trips to that destination? Um, I don't know. I guess I'm a bit of a rule follower most of the time. Um, so that's just me. But um, yeah, my advice is just to pay it. So, okay. Now, before we go, remember, I wanted to talk about hurricane season. So last week, now, did I talk about this last week or not? I don't remember. Um, last week we talked about, I think, well, I don't, I don't remember if I talked about it or not, but last week AccuWeather came out and, um, and mentioned what their forecast is for. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, look, you, if you, we as travel advisors, we tell people what the rules are they choose whether or not to obey them. I mean, I know, look, I have had, I've had clients who go down to Mexico and the first thing they do when they get to the resort is they go looking for drugs. If that's your predilection, that's what you're going to do. But you know, it's illegal. Might you get arrested? Yeah. Might you run into some nefarious characters and get shot or something crazy? Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, I like, one does what you can, but our job as advisors is to tell you what the 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 rules are and the regulations. And so that's why I say just just pay it sixteen bucks. You know, if you can afford to go to Cancun, if you can afford to go to Cancun, you can afford to pay the the visit tax. And let's just be clear. I'm just going to put that in uh, visitax.gov.gov.mx is the website. Yeah. So this is the official site. Um, if you're going to any other Mexican site, A, it's a scam. B, they will charge you way more. C, unlikely to hack your credit card, but you, you just, you're not going to a true site. And um, lots of hackers out there, lots of misleading information. So yeah. Um, okay. So now before we talk about hurricane stuff, um, if you haven't already done so, please go in and give it a thumbs up. I see a lot of you already have. Thank you for that. It really, like, you wouldn't believe how much it helps out the channel. Anytime you comment, anytime you like uh, a video, secret, even if you dislike it, that's okay. Um, it helps out because it shows YouTube that you're engaging, uh, that you're actually interested in the content. Um, so it, it really does help me out. So I appreciate it. Um, thank you in advance for doing it. And I do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, so hurricane season, so AccuWeather came out and they predicted just a bucket of hurricanes this year. And so uh, let me just check. I should have had this written down, but I just thought of this earlier. So they're predicting 20 to 25 named storms to form across the Atlantic basin in 2024. Um, eight to 12 expected to become hurricanes, four to seven to become major hurricanes. And what's interesting is their ability to um, <laughs> forecast the hurricanes seems to be about as good as their ability to forecast the weather. Um, and I don't, I, you know, I'm not a meteorologist. I don't know what's involved in this, but what I can tell you is, for example, for 2023, they predicted 11 to 25 named storms and we had 20. Um, in 2022, they predicted it was going to be a big year, 16 to 20 her named storms. We had 14. Um, the worst, I think, was 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and they predicted, um, 2020, they predicted 14 to 18 named storms. There were actually 30. They predicted seven to nine hurricanes. There were 14. And they predicted two to four major hurricanes. And there were seven. 
So um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah. So yeah. Should you worry about their hurricane forecast? I think no, just saying. Um, yeah, no more La Nina. So La Nina is, uh, no, El Nino. El Nino is what we're doing right now. Yeah. El Nino. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's so confusing. Okay. Here's the part that screws me up. El Nino is when a hot system comes through. Like, is it uh, like not to be stereotype or whatever, but would you not think La Nina, meaning the female, like meaning woman, would you not think female would be more representative of something hot, like hot flashes? I mean, I haven't started that yet. Uh, I'm sure it'll hit me at some point, but um, like seriously, you, but hot. And I, a friend of mine joked and she said, well, maybe it's because guys are more hot headed. I don't know. Like it just seems kind of like reverse of what you'd expect. But right now we are in El Nino. So that's given us hot weather, um, except for Chicago where Barbara's getting snow. <laughs> um but over the summer, we're going to be shifting seasons and we're going to go into uh, uh, the La Nina system, which means to say we're going to have colder weather, um, wetter weather, which, on, quite frankly, that's good for California and B.C., where we had, had some of the worst forest fires uh, seasons in, the, in history. Um, and, um, uh, you know but it's it's weird because it affects different sides more so they say with el nino they say el, el nino means there's going to be more hurricanes on the atlantic side and la nina means there's more hurricanes on the pacific side but less on the atlantic side but so how does that compare to them saying you know last year was 11 to 15 named storms this year they're saying 20 to 25 name storms in the Atlantic. I mean, riddle me this, right? So I guess what I'm saying in the end is they just don't know. So should you postpone your plans? No. Should you have a contingency plan? 100%. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, who knows? Less than the Pacific this season, according to Weather Channel. Yeah, but you know what? Like, I also... <laughs> in researching this, read that it, they were predicting more. So like when you got two completing, competing well-respected weather uh, advisors giving you conflicting information, like, I, you know, it just feels a bit like, okay, who do I trust? Okay, I trust nobody. I don't know. Um, so anyways, I hope you're enjoying this. If you did, again, if you can, if you haven't done a thumbs up, uh, please go ahead and do that. And thank you for those of you who did. Um, please also consider this. As, let's put that into like five or six words instead of one. Um, uh, please also consider subscribing um, so that you don't miss out on future videos. And if you click on the bell to get notifications, then also you'll get notified. So you just get a little pop up whenever I have a new video. And again, at the end of the month, I will be... Um, doing uh, a ton of videos when I'm in Cancun. Um, yeah, decide for yourself <laughs> pretty much. You know, yeah, takes your chances. You roll the dice, you takes your chances. Um, so yeah, you know, hope for the best, plan for the worst. Um, but that's all you can do, right? Make sure you buy insurance. That's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you do want to get more insider information behind the scenes stuff, some advanced videos, that kind of thing, uh, consider being uh, joining in as a channel member. Um, we've got rates starting from uh, two bucks a month or a dollar ninety nine, um, and up from there. So uh, it gives you just a different access to a little bit more information. And on this, uh, uh, well, I'm going to go and see the uh, Norwegian Bliss tomorrow. If you're a member, I am going to post a short on. Um, for members uh, so you'd be able to see the ship and stuff like that i unfortunately i can't get on this time because they're doing the the cruise that's repositioning up to vancouver ends in vancouver and then it's going to do an overnight um to seattle but it's a, what they call a non-revenue cruise which means there's no passengers on board there's going to be of course all the crew on board and who knows maybe they take this opportunity for the crew to have a day off and just have a party i don't know um 
but I'll, I'll go down and I'll see it downtown, but I won't be able to get on board and do a tour. So um, no, no big video for that one coming up. Uh, but I do have uh, my comparison video for the Rio resorts, which one I think you should stay at. That's coming up as well as an overall destination guide for Cabo. So stay tuned for that. So again, join us next Wednesday. We'll be back. Ah, I got to check. I might have to reschedule that. So stay tuned. I'll try to let you know as early as I can, if that's going to change at all. Um, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll put the notice up again. So yeah, just, just keep, keep tabs on that. I've got international visitors coming into town. We'll be busy running around downtown and showing them all the great stuff that there is to see in Vancouver. And I'll try to take some videos as we go and we see all the tourist stuff and I'll throw that in a video together. So if you are ever coming out this way, um, and you're not sure if you should book some extra time. Uh, I'll show you all the great stuff that you can see. So you can see that it definitely is worth coming out and uh, spending an extra couple of nights here in beautiful Vancouver. So thanks for tuning in again today and I uh, really appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great week and uh, we'll see you next week sometime. Bye for now.